What's up everyone? After the mega fan favorite Infernape finally came to light, another Sinnoh starter is up to bat, and this time we have Empoleon. Its first stage Piplup was popular and adorable, especially alongside Dawn in the anime. Although it did all in its power to not evolve, just like most of the main characters Pokemon, and thus its final evolution, that is our topic today, was wielded by Barry instead. But as far as the competitive scene goes, don't take a Nuzleaf out of Barry's book because spoiler alert, Hyper Beam Empoleon is not good. However, we'd like to know if Empoleon was good itself, and as such, we pose the question, how good was Empoleon actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Infernape may have ruled the tier in their debut generation, but its fellow starter wasn't too shabby either. As a matter of fact, it was pretty excellent. As the only water steel in the entire game, it was blessed with several unique advantages over its fellow water types. But of course, it had disadvantages too. Most waters aren't weak to ground or fighting, nor are they neutral to fire, so it was not going to perform the same way as more traditional waters would. Instead, it would use its unique advantages. No other water possesses all three of a stealth rock resistance, and the sandstorm and the toxic spikes immunity and until ferrothorn came along in the next generation it was the only pokemon besides shedinja to resist kingdra's stabs and polion set is largely defined by the one that fixes its meddling speed and turns it into a threat capable of blowing by and blowing away a huge amount of pokemon Agility. The traditional set is a substitute variant with Pataya Berry, originating in the days of Latias and Salamence when Scizor was the number one Pokemon in usage, picking off everything with its powerful technician boosted choice band bullet punch, and Polion used its quadruple steel resistance to avoid the most common form of revenge killing, not even coming close to having its substitute broken, while drowning everything in its path with Torrent and a Pataya boosted water stab. Now it did have to choose between Ice Beam and Grass Knot, which was a tough call since Latias and Suicune were both common presences, but luckily, even if it didn't have the right one, many Pokemon would simply drop to the sheer power of Hydro Pump. For example, even if running Grass Knot, once fully set up, Empoleon would just simply drop Salamence. And since it was also easy for it to set up on Latias, it wasn't too hard for it to destroy many teams. Now, it did have the issue of Modest versus Timid, as Timid would allow it to outrun Choice Scarf Rotom appliances, but the power drop was significant. Timid also still wouldn't get past Choice Scarf Flygon and Jirachi. So some intelligent players outmaneuvered this by setting Empoleon up on an outraged locked Flygon, which would let it get two agilities. It was especially effective at doing this because despite its effectiveness, Empoleon is still difficult to predict and an unrevealed variant strikes terror in the heart of the opponent late game, especially since it has so many places to set up. Choice Scarf Rotom appliances check it, but they also might have to lock into Shadow Ball or Hydro Pump, and suddenly they have to run from it. However, defensively, the set still struggled against Blissey and Vaporeon, which is why it fits so well on Toxic Spike's offense teams. Alternatively, Pokemon like Magma Storm Heatran or Explosion Gengar also helped to lure those two. Another set that became popular after Empoleon had established itself in the Platinum metagame was the lead variant. With the popularity of Azelf, Aerodactyl, Metagross, and Swampert leads, Empoleon was able to destroy them all, finishing the former two off at 1 HP with Aqua Jet, slaughtering Swampert with Grass Knot, and against Metagross, it would survive an Earthquake while setting up Stealth Rock and remaining out of bullet punch range thanks to its terrific quad resistance and unleashing a torrent boosted hydro pump that metagross stood no chance at surviving with Chapelberry, it would also face no trouble against fake out infernape leads and would survive superpower from mixed dragonite leads that became popular upon the release of heart gold and soul silver it unfortunately couldn't fit lumberry so it didn't do too well against roserade although it definitely wasn't too bad as it could try to wake up and set up stealth rock as roserade set up toxic spice since it wasn't immediately threatened by it and the proliferation of later leads such as Machamp and Zapdos was difficult for Empoleon to deal with. However, any experienced DPP player can tell you about how terrifying it is to face the standard lead set. It also eventually started eschewing Stealth Rock for an all-out attacking set approach while holding Focus Sash. And since lead Infernate was becoming weaker and weaker with bulky Starmie becoming incredibly commonplace, this let Empoleon kill Zapdos and Dragonite and get a huge leg up on opposing offensive teams without its own team having to go without Stealth Rock for the rest of the game. 
the game. Eventually, some players eschewed substitute on agility sets, so Empoleon could reap the benefits of having both Ice Beam and Grass Knot. And since there was no point in running Pattaya Berry, if it couldn't be easily activated via substitute, Shuka Berry became the item of choice, giving Empoleon another weapon to blow past the ever common Choice Scarf Flygon. This also gave it defensive utility in holding off earthquakes from common Dragon Dancers, which was incredibly useful given its resistance to their stabs. Some players even appreciated Empoleon's defensive utility with Shuka Berry so much, they utilized offensive defensive sets with it that could set up Stealth Rock and take a key hit or two, which could be the difference between a win and a loss, before roaring the aggressor out while still not doing too badly on the offensive side. And with how terrifying Kingdra's various sets proved to be, as well as the known terror of the Dragon Dancers, that was a useful role. Overall, Empoleon was a huge part of DPP overuse, consistently utilized by top players over the years to bowl over the competition. Now for Gen 4 VGC. That's right, we actually did find one notable placing for Empoleon in VGC 2009. The player Omega Donut used a highly unorthodox iron defense set with Rest and Chesto Berry that had defensive utility and could, in a pinch, try and stall opponents out as a last ditch strategy. He rode his team with this unusual beast to a runner up placement at the Nashville Regionals. Now, Empoleon wasn't exactly Cresselia tier in VGC, but had the format existed longer, perhaps more use would have been found for it. But unfortunately, much like a lot of VGC 2009, not a lot of it was recorded, so we can't really say much as to what Empoleon's state in the overall metagame was, but luckily, Omega Donut has left a little bit of info behind on what his Empoleon was supposed to do, which it was apparently meant to take on both Metagross and Snorlax, who were really popular at the time, via tanking it with an insane amount of defense. So yeah, props to Omega Donut for using it. Now on to the weather generation, Ferrothorn came into being in the 5th generation, and unfortunately for Empoleon, it is the most perfect Empoleon counter one could have asked for. With how amazing and ubiquitous Ferrothorn was, as well as its partner in crime Jellison, other checks like Water type Rotom Wash, and the fact that Pattaya Berry was unreleased, Empoleon's usage predictably dropped. Team Preview revealing it was also a major hit. However, it did make a few minor appearances in Black and White 2, after Pattaya Berry was released, and people realized it was even more nuclear with permanent rain support. Its power was jacked up even higher thanks to Celebi. The specially defensive set of Celebi was a staple in the metagame, and over time people realized it could kind of run whatever set it wanted. So this caused players to experiment with baton passing nasty plots, and alongside Agility Thunder Asterion and Choice Scarf Keldeo, Empoleon was possibly the scariest beneficiary of this, as it would drown just about everything in the tier after a boost. It could choose between sub Pattaya to reach dizzying levels of power, or the three attack set to cut through the a popular Jellicent and Gastrodon. Now, it wasn't unstoppable. Thanks to faster choice scarfers like Garchomp and Keldeo, as well as Breloom's Mach Punch, or Pokemon like Skarmory and Roar Heatran that made pulling up pass off in the first place difficult, but enough teams were helpless against the strategy that the impact was felt on by the meta, even if it didn't last. Now, as far as tiers goes, Empoleon is underused, and in underused, its usage was rare. Its niche didn't offer enough to let it truly compete with the plethora of other tremendous waters in the tier. Its agility sets were fine, and in fact, Source Dance was surprisingly vicious when wielded by a few brave players, but it was a rare sight. It wasn't bad, it just didn't stand out, and thus it was quite uncommon at the highest level of tournament play, even in underuse. Now for Gen 5 VGC, Empoleon did have a small niche, using its auspicious typing to stand in the way of strong water and dragon types, which allowed it to do things like spread burns and slow foes down with Icy Wind. It could even target its so-called best counter Ferrothorn, as well as hard countering Scizor with Hidden Power Fire. Earthquake being spread damage means it's much easier to survive, and it's bulky enough to survive even fighting gem close combats from Hitmontop with Chapel Berry. Also, in VGC 2013, it got the ability Defiant, which theoretically could help it give Intimidators a bad time. This underrated threat was seen on Dewey Ha's team that he used to reach top 4 of the San Jose Regionals and runner-up of the Utah Regionals. However, these placements were the only placements we could find of this time, so we could probably surmise that overall it just wasn't a common Pokemon. But Dewey definitely got a ton of useful mileage out of it, at the very least. Now on to Gen 6. At this point, Empoleon was entirely relegated to underuse. Its bread and butter set was a specially defensive stealth rocker, although it could also make good use of the newly buffed Defog, sometimes on the same set, that could hold off dangerous special threats, such as Kyurem, High Dragon, Whimsicott, and Suicune. It even had easy entry on the fantastic new fairy types, such as Sylveon and Florges, and it also paired well with them, appreciating their fighting resistance. These fairies were also important because they carried Heal Bell, and in mid-paced games, Empoleon often found itself 
of getting into Skald Wars with Tenacruel, Suicune, and Opposing Empoleon. These burns could be game changing, and thus having the option to get rid of them would be similarly important and could provide an incredibly useful edge. Wish support also made up for Empoleon's lack of a recovery move, and it could easily switch in on steel and poison attacks aimed at the fairies. Empoleon's utility offensive sets were rarer, since they were less easy to put on a team and use, but they were quite effective nonetheless. The surprise factor gave its already powerful attacks even more oomph behind them, and really stuck it to common Pokemon like Hydreigon that thought they were safe against a weak defensive variant, and of course, its many resistances allowed it to pull off a Defog as well. This gave it utility even if there was a hard wall on the other team, such as Blissey or an opposing Empoleon. It even ran Shukaberry to shrug off hits from the bountiful ground types in the tier, like Mamoswine, Crocodile, and Mega Swamper. Agility sets were pretty difficult to pull off with the amount of good defensive checks Empoleon had, so it generally stuck to those two. The defensive set especially was a truly integral part of underuse, carving out a significant niche in the tier whose presence had to be accounted for by any player who wanted their team to be successful. And as for Gen 6 VGC, not being in the Kalos Pokedex in 2014, and not having any discernible use in the Uber year of 2016, Empoleon only had one year to try and pull something off, which was 2015. And we only found one notable placement in this year of VGC, which was a top 8 appearance at the Massachusetts Regionals in the Senior Division used by Jake Rosen. Now given this extraordinarily sparse usage, it's difficult to surmise what it was meant to do, but it's probably reasonable to assume it was similar to its Generation 5 appearances, which was a bulky, stronger attacker with some nice resistances. However, it wasn't exactly anywhere near the ballpark of having a significant niche in the meta. But congrats to Jake for getting top 8 with Empoleon. Now finally, Sun and Moon. Finding itself in underuse once again in the 7th generation, Empoleon used its resistances and bulk once more to carve out the same solid specially defensive niche just like the one in the generation prior. Although this time around, it was a lot more likely to use knockoff, protect, and roar. The former two having to do with Z-moves, as knockoff could give away a potential Z-crystal while a well-timed protect could soften the impact of an otherwise devastating Z-move. However, since it requires Scald and also wants Toxic, Stealth Rock, and Defog, it's easy to see how it could be frustrating to not be able to fit all of those terrific tools. It was a great Pokemon once again, however, and was one of the reasons that Latias, who was now also underused, ran Gigavolt Havoc. Staving off another terrifying new threat in Primarina was also incredibly useful, since its spec set murdered just about everything else in the tier. The Generation 7 burn nerf was both good and bad, and while Empoleon enjoyed not losing health if it ate another skull, it was also less able to threaten Pokemon such as Tentacruel and Rotom Cut with its stab, which is why it enjoyed auxiliary residual damage options, such as knockoff and toxic, if it could fit them. Overall, it reprised its defensive role quite well, taking on some of the scarier new faces Underuse had to offer. And that's it, so how good was Empoleon actually? It was one of the most terrifying Pokemon in Overuse in its debut generation, but ever since then it's been more of a UU Pokemon, having really picked up steam with the Defog buff and looking to remain a staple for this role. As for VGC, it was pretty niche. Overall, Empoleon's stats were excellent, and its water typing is amazing, especially in unique combination with Steel, and the combination of the water and Steel type gives Empoleon attributes like nearly no other. And even though Empoleon wasn't the most top tier choice out there after its debut generation, Generation, it was still a pretty great Pokemon. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and since we switched to the new voting system, to vote for the next Pokemon, please comment on the most recent post of the community tab of this channel on the post that will be published at the same time of this video's release. So I guess for the comments, let me know what you think about competitive Empoleon, how would you make it better, etc etc. Thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.